The five most common mistakes in Italian. Hi, this is Ilaria from Ilazer.com and welcome to the episode number 58 of my podcast Italian Language in English. In today's episode, I am going to share with you five common mistakes often made by my students. If you are curious and if you want to know more about this, Keep listening to this audio. Being Italian and teaching the language to foreigners, I find it very interesting to see how students of different nationalities approach the study of Dante's language and it is also interesting to me to understand what they learn with this and what, on the other hand, gives them trouble. One of the topics that certainly causes them no small amount of difficulty is the learning and use the verbs. However, there are also other topics that, while not considered as complicated, can still be quite challenging. Today I am going to talk about the five most common mistakes in Italian, or at least the five mistakes I've most frequently encountered during lessons with my students, along with explanations. I'll start with the more trivial ones, which are often due to distraction, and then move on to those errors that require more careful study to be permanently eliminated. 1. The words problema and aiuto. It's no surprise that the word problema is a real problem. Many people repeatedly get it wrong and it's easy to understand why. According to the rules we learn from the very first Italian lessons, words that end with a are feminine and should be accompanied by a feminine article. However, be careful. Some words are exceptions, and problema is one of them. So, remember that it's correct to say il problema and never la problema. The word aiuto, on the other hand, is a term that is mostly misused by those who speak Spanish and Portuguese due to a translation that is, let's say, a bit too literal. In Italian, la iuta, article plus noun, doesn't exist. But the expression la iuta does, meaning someone helps her. So, remember to always say la iuto in the masculine form and never la iuta. 2. Articles after demonstrative and indefinite adjectives. No need to panic. I don't want to delve into grammar. And soon you'll see that this mistake is much easier to understand and correct than you might think. Although even we Italians make mistakes when speaking our own language, this type of error is particularly unusual and is almost impossible for a native Italian to make. Wondering why? Simply because it results in a sentence that sounds very, very strange. I am sure this mistake arises from the fact that, in Italian, articles are almost always required, with only a few rare exceptions. That's why I often hear my students say phrases like alcuni gli zii, some the ankles, molte le persone, many the people, quelle le storie, those the stories, and so on. As I have already mentioned, sentences structured this way sound very odd. And this type of mistake will stand out to a native Italian much more than the other error, such as misspelling a word ending or using the subjunctive incorrectly. 
From now on, remember that when using an indefinite adjective, such as tanto, poco, molto, etc., or a demonstrative adjective, such as questo, quello, etc., the article is unnecessary. So, saying alcuni zii, some uncles, molte persone, many people, or quelle storie, those stories, is correct and more than sufficient. 3. Sentences indicating duration. Piove da due giorni fa, or dorme da due ore fa, are phrases that are only partially correct. In both cases, there is a bit too much. In this type of expression, we cannot use both da and fa together. We need to choose one. So, how can we make the sentence sound more natural in Italian? There are several correct ways to express the same concept. Piove da due giorni. It has been raining for two days. Sono due giorni che piove. It has been raining for two days now. Ha cominciato a piovere due giorni fa. It started raining two days ago. Even for the other sentence, we can use better expressions such as Dorme da due ore. He, she has been sleeping for two hours. Sono due ore che dorme. He, she has been sleeping for two hours now. Ha cominciato a dormire due ore fa. He, she started sleeping two hours ago. So, from now on, be careful not to create overly complex sentences thinking they will sound better. Keep it simple and I am sure your sentences will be perfect. 4. Avere senso or fare senso? These are two very similar expressions that, in Italian, have completely different meanings. The mistake often arises when my students want to say it makes sense in Italian. Unfortunately, if they rely on a literal translation, the result is not what they expect and they often end up saying fa senso. The expression fa senso means that something is unpleasant, disgusting, or even in the extreme, mi fa schifo, it grosses me out. In short, it is a translation that is nowhere near the meaning of a senso, which indicates that something has its own logic or is reasonable. So, the next time you need to use this expression, take a moment to think about it. And I am sure you will use the correct phrase. 5. Meglio or migliore, peggio or peggiore. Meglio, migliore, peggio and peggiore, better, best, worse, worst, are terms that frequently appear among the top five common mistakes made by my students in Italian. As a result, they can be some of the most challenging aspects to learn and use correctly. One way to clarify the situation is to determine whether the word we need is an adjective, migliore, peggiore, or an adverb, meglio, peggio. For example, La mia canzone è migliore della tua. My song is better than yours. Migliore, più bella, più buona. Is an adjective. Io canto meglio di te. I sing better than you. Meglio, più bene, in modo più buono. Adverb. Il mio tema di italiano è peggiore del tuo. My Italian essay is worse than yours. Peggiore, più cattivo. Is an adjective. Oggi sto peggio di ieri. Today I feel worse than yesterday. Peggio. Più male, in modo peggiore, is an adverb. Remember, più bene and più male are strongly discouraged in Italian. 
I use them here only to illustrate their meaning and what they are for. Therefore, avoid using them when you speak Italian and always prefer meglio or peggio. Understanding the degrees of adjectives and adverbs does not come automatically. It requires time and practice to master and use them correctly. Even native Italians can sometimes be confused when they use these adjectives and adverbs. At this point, I just want you to notice that this is just a brief explanation. You can visit my blog, ilaz.com, and click the link in the description for a more thorough explanation. Conclusion The errors mentioned in these articles are the most five common mistakes in Italian, or at least the mistakes I hear repeatedly from my students. Some can be considered lapses of attention, while others result from a lack of understanding of the theory or, more simply, from a lack of practice. What I always emphasize to my students is the need to practice and apply what they have learned through theory and exercises by engaging in conversation. For me, this is essential because the ultimate goal of any language student is to speak confidently and fluently. If you need other explanation about Italian language and culture, take a look at my website, ilaz.com.